Let me go ahead and categorize the last four. Let me start off with the least competitive to the most competitive. Hello everyone, welcome back to Luis Discusses Everything. And today we're going to discuss my Senate election prediction. Just um, a little bit less than, a little bit more than two weeks away from the um, 2022 Senate election predictions. And the last time I did a Senate election prediction was a little bit more than a week ago. And I have to say, things have, have changed substantially um, against the Democratic Party. As you can see by my screen recording here, I'm on the 538 Politics uh, Forecast website, and they forecast a dead heat in the Senate. For context, um, or for contrast, the last time I did a Senate prediction, the Democrats were ahead in the Senate. Now it's basically a statistical tie. The Democrats are still ahead, but it's more of a toss up than anything else. And there's um, a couple of reasons why. Um, in the case of 538, again, the reason I picked 538 is because I think they, um, they take an aggregate of all the polls and, and take into account the pundit opinions on this regard, and they give you a more, um, I feel, in my opinion, a more accurate forecast. You can see that um, in most of the scenarios, in uh, 80% of the scenarios, Democrats win by a 50-50 uh, majority in the Senate. Uh, that's why they, high, they have a slightly higher chance. But in the most recent polls, if we scroll down, all the way down, the Democrats have just been like itching up in the sense, uh, itching down in, in, in some sense. So they the last time I gave, uh, I did this prediction was around uh, October 12, and it was... Uh, Democrats had a 65% chance of capturing the Senate. It has gone all the way down 10 points to 55%. They're at a 50-50 uh, chance tie. Um, and that has to do with a number of reasons. Most notably, that in the most recent polls, Republicans have itched closer, had kind of like narrowed the margin, specifically on the most key races. And also on the races that were going to be competitive are no longer so. Uh, in my last video, I not only talked about the four key races, which are Nevada, Georgia, Pennsylvania, and Arizona, but I also talked about Wisconsin, North Carolina, Ohio, and Florida as being key races. And I have to say, the aforementioned uh, last uh, three races that I mentioned, uh, four races that I mentioned, Florida, Ohio, North Carolina, and Wisconsin, are no longer in play for the Democratic Party. They've gone too far ahead towards the Republican Party in this instance. So in all those four races, I think the Republicans will win. Uh, and it's something you will see in my Senate election map, uh, which leaves us with only four very, very competitive or extremely competitive races, or as uh, 538 says, dead heat. Um, so let's start with uh, number one. Uh, most competitive race, and that is Arizona's Senate race. Or um, Out of the four most competitive races, I would say this is the least competitive. Uh, Mark Kelly is still up by a substantial margin, but still 10% less than what he was the last time we saw. So Mark Kelly is up, um, has a 74% chance of victory against Blake Masters uh, in 80% of the scenarios, according to 538. But he's only up in the polls by around a little bit less than 4% uh, in, in the aggregate of polls. Um, the last time I did the forecast, he was almost, uh, he was up by 80%. Now he uh, he had an 80% chance of winning. Now he's um, has a 74% chance of winning. He was up by 5% in the polls. Now he's up by only less than 4% in the polls. And this has to do with a series of high quality polls that just came up in that short amount of time, which are uh, the YouGov Insider Advantage Trafalgar polls. All have them up, are, uh, Mark Kelly up, but only by one or as low as high as 4% or as low as 1%. And that's not a good look for the Democratic Party in the Senate. I did say that in this race, as with other races, the 
margins that Democrats were up by was unrealistic. And I, and I stress that the most likely scenario was that these polls would shift, but I definitely did not expect this much of a shift in the polls. Second race in mine is the Pennsylvania race, which um, John Fetterman, and this is the one that's changed the most. John Fetterman has a 58% chance of winning in the Senate race um, versus Mehmet Oz's 42% chance. Um, and this is um, true because of the most recent, again, the most recent uh, polls that have come out are all being high quality and all being fairly close. As you can see, the last time we did uh, a Senate prediction, he had a 72% chance of winning the Senate race, and now he has a 58% chance, a substantial decrease. Um, the same thing happens in the polls, where he was up by about um, 5%, um, just shy of 6% in the polls, and now he's only up by about 2% in a state uh, carried by uh, Joe Biden by... Uh, about 1% or 1.2%. And we also see the first poll, which gives um, the lead to Mehmet Oz. We have, so far, we had not seen any poll with Mehmet Oz winning the Pennsylvania Senate race, but this is the first poll that shows him winning, albeit it is a, a lower quality poll, not like the higher. And the higher quality polls, just as the Trafalgar group, and Insider Advantage, um, Echelon, Insa, um, uh, Emerson College, Suffolk University, etc. All of them have Fetterman up. But if you see all the other polls, right, in, in all of the uh, all the other uh, polls, John Fetterman was as high up as 19% uh, in September. And now he's only up by 1% or even losing in the most recent polls. So it's no surprise that um, John Fetterman is in dire straits, I guess you could say. And for context, Biden was up by also like a similar margin back in uh, 2020. And he and Biden ended up winning by 1.2% or something like that. So this is a very low margin for Fetterman. And I would say it puts the race at a toss-up category. Uh, most likely. Third race we um, we shift our attention to is the Georgia Senate race. And in this race, you have Raphael Warnock against Herschel Walker. We have talked a lot about them in this channel. Um, Herschel Walker, uh, Raphael Warnock has a 53% chance of winning this Senate race. This is one of the few silver linings for the Democrats right now because uh, in this race, the polls have been uh, fairly accurate uh, in, in most recent elections, but that is um, eclipsed by the bad news that in the most recent polls there's been an even split, and these are these are in um, high quality polls such as the Landmark Communications and the Trafalgar Group. They have them have Warnock up by two percent, which is a more accurate one, I would say. But still, close race has always been a close race. But um, at least Warnock here, if you're a Democrat, you should be happy that Warnock is up in this race. Um, most likely to be a tipping point state. Um, moving on to the last state that I'm going to look at, because I think we should focus on these four, is the Nevada race. In this case, the Democrat is down. It's 54% chance for Adam Luxalt to win this uh, Senate race. Um, it is categorized as dead heat. In other words, it is a pure toss-up as well. All these races are pure toss-ups with the exception of the uh, mark of the Arizona Senate race. Um, and it has to do with the fact that uh, just Adam Luxalt has been like consistently up in the polls, uh, including high rated pollsters. Only one has seen Cortez Masto in the past two months leading in the polls. Um, this is, a, of course, a, s a Senate race or state that um, underestimates uh, Democrats by 3%. So we could see like a comeback by Cortez Masto. But if Adam Luxalt is leading by as much as five, point, five points in a Republican quote-unquote wave year, um, I don't see Cortez Masto winning this race at all. Uh, in fact, in the predicted markets, we saw a huge shift in favor of the GOP. Um, they even categorize Pennsylvania 
with uh, Mehmet Oz winning in that race, something that I don't know if I fully agree with, but they have the Republicans winning 51 to 49 against the Democrats, giving Georgia to the Democrats, Nevada to the Republicans, Arizona to the Democrats, so on and so forth, you can see by the map. So this is a pretty substantial uh, shift, if I may say so myself. Now that we have all that information aside, I can give you my own uh, prediction. I already filled the map with uh, with the races that are less competitive. I think uh, I give the Republicans 49 seats to the Democrats 47 seats, giving the Republicans Wisconsin, Ohio, North Carolina, and Florida uh, by lean margins. Uh, all the other races are categorized either solid or lean margins such as Colorado and Washington giving them lean margins towards the Democrats um, I think New Hampshire is going to be a solid margin honestly I don't see them uh, losing that race anytime soon um, but let me go ahead and categorize the last four let me start off with the least competitive to the most competitive I think Arizona in my opinion it um, Mark Kelly is sufficiently popular enough where I see Mark Kelly winning by a lean margin in Arizona, despite the most recent set of polls. He's just so uh, beloved in Arizona that I don't see that changing anytime soon. He's been an incumbent for the past few years, and he's gained quite a bit of popularity. And um, Blake Masters is just not as popular as he, as he is, so I'm going to give it to the Democrats. The other one that I'm going to give to the Democrats is Georgia. I think Raphael Warnock is running an incredible campaign. Uh, and I think that that will give him enough of a victory to win by a tilt margin, not by a lean margin in this state, which will be basically a coin flip. Either candidate can win in this race, but I give it to Raphael Warnock. I think um, Walker is just too far off the rails for him to win this Senate race, especially after the scandals and especially after like his performances and debates and whatnot. Um, I will move ahead to the next race, which is the Nevada. And I think in the case of Nevada, I feel confident enough to give it to the Republican Party. I think they will win it, but I don't think they will win it by a lean margin. I think they will win it by a tilt margin because Cortez Masto still has the incumbency advantage, but it's enough of a of a margin ahead in the polls to give it to the Republican Party, but I think it will be a nail biter. I think it will be by a tilt margin. And the last race that I'm going to cat categorize will be Pennsylvania, and I think this is a tough one because um, I felt confident just a couple weeks ago that this is definitely going to go to the Democratic Party. There's no way, whatnot. Now I don't feel that confident, right? I still think that in this point in time, with the most recent polls given, it's going to be an incredibly close race. I think probably closer than Georgia, which is surprising to say. I, I, that was the opposite just a couple of weeks ago. But I think in this case, it will most likely be or it will most likely go up to this point. If I had to pick, I will give it to the Democratic Party, but only by a tilt margin. I think it's going to be less than 1%. It's going to be a nail biter and we won't know the results of that election probably until week after the day of the election, uh, which is similar to what happened in 2020. And uh, I think I still give the Senate to the Democrats. I, that could be my bias, but I think I'll still give the Senate to the Democrats with a 50-50 uh, split. This could easily go to the Republicans next week because I'm going to do a prediction next week. Um, I just need to see more data and see that more of a consistent shift in Pennsylvania uh, for me to justify giving this to Mehmet Oz. And it's because of a few factors, right? Um, Mehmet Oz is still seen as a carpetbagger in Pennsylvania. Um, Fetterman is an incumbent attorney general. So he's beloved in the state. He has... Um, a lot of sway from voters in the state. He is trusted. So I think that in an open seat like this one, that would give Fetterman 
the edge he needs to win. But again, it will be by a very small margin. I wouldn't be surprised if Fetterman wins by like 20,000 votes or something like that, or 11,000 votes, like Trump would say. Uh, but um, but yeah, so this is my this results of the uh, 2022 most recent Senate election prediction as of uh, Saturday, October 22nd. Um, stay tuned for next week where I give my a new uh, Senate election prediction. I'll give you my House election prediction, although it's a more, uh, you know, it is a less interesting atmosphere in the House versus the Senate. And I'll also give you my gubernatorial election uh, prediction video. So thank you so much for watching. Uh, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, share this video with your friends, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.